Weed hangovers are super common. The feeling of being tired the next day, or still high after you've slept, is something that even the most experienced smokers can sometimes encounter. But what happens when that feeling lasts for days? Can a weed hangover last for a week, even longer? If you are still experiencing feelings of being high long after the weed should be out of your system, and especially if you've had a bad or frightening weed experience, it's very possible that what you're now experiencing is not the effects of the weed, but the symptoms of depersonalization and derealization. Hey everyone, I'm Sean O'Connor, author of the Depersonalization Manual. I suffered with chronic weed-induced depersonalization for two years before I recovered completely. And in the more than 15 years since then, my book, The Depersonalization Manual, has helped thousands of people around the world to recover from DPDR. And today, we're going to find out if that persistent weed hangover you've been experiencing might actually be depersonalization and derealization. Let's get started. We've all been there. Last night you smoked a lot, maybe too much, or the strain was way stronger than you expected. Or you took two edibles instead of one and they both hit you at the same time. Maybe you greened out and felt sick, and today you might feel brain fog, dry mouth, headache, etc, etc. If you use weed on a long enough timeline, you're pretty much bound to experience a weed hangover at some point. Even the most careful smokers can still underestimate the strength of a strain and find themselves dealing with the after effects the following day. Now, if you're still feeling high after you've slept, it can be a disconcerting experience. But generally, weed hangovers are short-lived and can be remedied with some food, hydration, a shower, and some coffee. But what if that feeling of being high still doesn't go away? What if days or even weeks later, you still feel like you're high? In that case, it's possible that what you're experiencing is not a weed hangover, but the symptoms of depersonalization and derealization, or DPDR. DPDR is characterized by a feeling of disconnection from yourself and your surroundings. You may feel like the world looks and feels strange and unfamiliar. You may experience brain fog and racing thoughts. Your vision can also feel like it's been affected and everything can feel like it's in 2D or like you're seeing reality from behind a pane of glass. If you're not sure that what you're experiencing is a weed hangover or DPDR, ask yourself these three questions. Number one, has enough time passed that the effects of the weed should have stopped? With smoking and vaping, that's normally between one to three hours, but the effects can linger for up to eight hours. With edibles, the effects typically last a maximum of 12 hours, but can sometimes linger for up to 24 hours. Question number two. Are you still experiencing feelings of disconnection and dreaminess, like you're still high? And number three. Are you experiencing feelings of intense fear, anxiety, and discomfort? If you've answered yes to all three, it's likely that what you're experiencing is not the effects of the weed, but the symptoms of depersonalization and derealization. As frightening as it can be, DPDR is extremely common and well recognized as a transient symptom of anxiety and panic. It's often referred to as the airbag of the mind. It's like the mental equivalent of heart palpitations and muscle tension. It's part of your body and brain's correct response to stress and anxiety. 75% of people will experience DPDR at some point in their lives. Yes, it's that common. Why? Because just about everyone will at some point experience intense stress and anxiety. It's a natural part of life. And for the vast majority of those people, the feelings of disconnection typically last for just a few minutes or hours and then gently fade away and stop. Just like all symptoms of anxiety are supposed to do. Your brain realizes that you're safe and it doesn't need to have these alarm systems like DPDR still triggered. And so it turns them off. And the symptoms of anxiety, including feelings of disconnection, all fade away and stop. However, what can sometimes happen is that people can focus on the feeling of disconnection while it's happening and panic that it means that something is wrong. Like they're going crazy, they're high and they can't come down, etc. This can lead to compulsive checking on the thoughts and feelings, which prevents them from fading away naturally, which is what they are supposed to do, and causing them to last for much longer than they should. This process, as complicated as it might sound, is actually quite simple and very common, and essentially it's the basis of all anxiety-based conditions. And DPDR, 
like all anxiety-based conditions, can have all sorts of different triggers, panic attacks, work stresses, etc., etc. But if the trigger is a bad weed experience, it can create a particularly confusing situation. Why? Because the experience of being high and the experience of DPDR are arguably kind of similar. Think about it. When you're high on weed and certain other drugs, it can feel quite dreamy or floaty, like you're looking at reality from a distance. And with DPDR, the feeling of disconnection is arguably kind of similar. The big difference is, however, that on weed, that feeling can be quite lovely. It's relaxing, music sounds great, food tastes amazing, and you can't stop laughing. With DPDR, however, it can feel terrifying. You haven't taken anything, but you still feel high. You're trying to concentrate on your work, study, etc., and yet you have this persistent feeling of disconnection. Where this becomes a big problem is when you've had the panic attack on the weed. Maybe you greened out, maybe you accidentally took too much, or the strain or the edible was way stronger than you had anticipated. This triggered a panic attack, and now you're experiencing the resultant feelings of depersonalization and derealization, maybe even days after smoking the weed. But what we incorrectly assume is that these feelings are still happening because of the lingering effects of the weed. You start to panic that you're somehow still high, days or weeks later, that you can't come down, that the THC is somehow still in your system, that you took so much weed that you somehow fried your brain. You start asking yourself panicked questions like, can a weed hangover last a week? When what's actually happening is not the lingering effects of the weed, but the lingering effects of the depersonalization and derealization from the panic attack. I went through this myself, and I understand. It can be a very, very scary experience. And it's a lot more common than you might think. As the legalization of weed continues and younger people are exposed to the drug at earlier ages, the tendency towards overwhelming, terrifying experiences is increasing. Add to that the fact that modern strains are being engineered to be incredibly strong. The experience of a teenager smoking pot in the 1970s is very different from a kid today who is smoking potentially weapons-grade weed for their very first experience with the drug. They're expecting fun, laughter, and relaxation, and what they get is a terrifying near-total loss of reality that can last for hours. This can, of course, lead to total panic and the triggering of depersonalization and derealization. What can also happen is a delayed effect. So you can have the frightening weed experience, but you come down and you feel a bit shaken, but you're okay. And then days, even weeks later, you have another panic attack. And often the scariest thing about that second panic attack is that it feels like you're back in that weed headspace of disconnection and erasing thoughts, even though this time you haven't taken anything. In fact, that's exactly what happened to me back in 2005. As frightening as all this can seem, it's important to remember that it's temporary and harmless. The feelings of disconnection that occur with DPDR can feel terrifying and disconcerting, but they are ultimately just part of your body and brain's natural and correct response to stress and anxiety. It's your brain's anxious response happening at the wrong time. That's all. Now, one of the most common responses you'll hear when discussing DPDR is, but this can't just be anxiety. I have felt anxiety before and this isn't it. This literally feels like I'm in a dream, like my vision has been affected. This can't just be anxiety. I hear you. In fact, I used to think the exact same thing. But here's the thing. Everything you're experiencing and describing is 100% consistent with anxiety. It's just a different level of anxiety than what you're used to. Your reference points for anxiety are probably experiences like a college exam, asking somebody out on a date, a work presentation, etc. But what you encounter in a bad weed experience is much closer to fight or flight anxiety, the worry that you're literally going to die or go crazy. And that carries with it a completely different level of anxious intensity and a different set of symptoms, one of which is the feeling of intense depersonalization and derealization. And with a bad weed experience, that can go on for hours and hours. And this is something that we really need to mention too just how terrifying a bad weed experience can really be. With the legalization of weed and the discussion of all of its benefits, 
Any talk of the inherent risks of the drug can often be railroaded. And especially with young people, they may feel pressure to just take the drug, regardless of how scary it can be. And it can be scary. I've had enough bad weed experiences over the years to recognize the feeling when it starts to go wrong. The creeping realization that you've taken too much, that you don't know how high you're going to get or when it's going to stop. The rolling memory loss, the inability to focus on anything, the roller coaster of thoughts that just keeps going. Even if you've had plenty of green outs over the years, it's never a pleasant experience. Although with experience, you can at least remind yourself that however bad it is, you'll be fine in a few hours. But if you're young and not very experienced, and particularly if you're smoking very strong weed and don't know what to expect, you can really feel like you've been cut off from reality, floating in space with no lifeline back to Earth. With edibles, this can be even more intense, as the delayed reaction relative to smoking, which is pretty much immediate, can be quite confusing. You might take one gummy bear, wait an hour, feel nothing, and so take another one. But what you don't realize is that the reason that the first one has taken so long is that your body is still digesting that pizza that you had for dinner. And once that's done, the effects of both gummies hits you hard at the same time. It can be an absolutely overwhelming experience, the discussion of which sometimes gets lost in the wave of positivity that has come with the legalization of weed. In fact, because of the decades of hyperbolic demonization of weed and the failed war on drugs, it can today seem regressive to even mention the fact that weed has acknowledged risks associated with it and that a bad weed experience can be terrifying. But of course, weed, just like all psychoactive drugs, carries with it a set of risks. It's not regressive to acknowledge that. Personally, I'm all for the legalization of weed. I think it's a very, very positive thing. And I'm also all for an open conversation about the known risks of the drug, especially for people who may be younger or inexperienced with the drug and its effects. In fact, the more that we can talk about those risks, the more that we can raise awareness of conditions like weed-induced DPDR, which will help people to identify quickly and not mistakenly confuse them with, for example, a weed hangover that just won't go away. Because the sooner that somebody understands the DPDR, regardless of what triggered it, is completely harmless and temporary, the sooner that they can start on their road to recovery. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, you can instantly download my complete guide to recovery, the depersonalization manual, featuring hours of exclusive audio and video content not available anywhere else at dpmanual.com. Any comments or questions? Let me know in the comments section below and I'll make sure to answer and help you out. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and if you found this video helpful, please do like and share. Thanks for watching.